Spatial audio, what actually is it? How do you get it and why would you want it? Well, if you're into your tech, chances are you've probably heard the term spatial audio floating about. And after some pretty big news and updates and recent releases from the likes of Sonos and Apple, spatial audio is the words on everybody's lips right now. But there's still a lot of questions floating around and in general, definitely some confusion about the term. So I'm gonna strip things back for you and take you through everything that you need to know about spatial audio. So to kick things off, what actually is spatial audio? So to keep it really simple, spatial audio is an immersive 3D listening experience that uses multiple channels of audio from a speaker or speakers to place individual sounds within more precision and accuracy than traditional stereo sound. So rather than listening to audio that comes from one place or just from left and right horizontally in 2D, spatial audio is pretty much designed to completely envelop you in a three-dimensional sphere of audio that adds height to the equation. Now, there's a lot of talk about this being the future of audio, and that's because of the sheer amount of creative possibilities that it opens up for things like music, movies, gaming and TV. But we'll get into that a little bit later on. In terms of what you gain, just think of total immersion. Spatial audio will give your favorite tracks and movies more realism, more clarity and depth than before. And it will be as if you're in the room with the artist or you're right in the heart of the action. Now, one really important thing to highlight is that the term spatial audio is actually a little bit of an umbrella term. And because of that, there have been a lot of brands jumping on the spatial audio bandwagon and marketing things as spatial audio enabled, but they aren't quite delivering what you'd expect. Now, a lot of people think that spatial Spatial audio is specifically an Apple Music term, but technically it was introduced by Amazon with the Echo Studio in 2019, but that is a story for another day. But yes, it was really pushed by Apple when they introduced it in 2020, and they've had a big involvement in driving it over the past few years. Apple have two terms, Apple Music Spatial Audio, which is what we're gonna be focusing on in today's video, but they do also have Apple Spatial Audio, which is specifically relating to the effect that they provide with their headphones when paired with a compatible iOS device. So Apple Spatial Audio is pretty cool, and it basically makes you feel as if you're moving around within the 3D sphere of audio. Now, they use dynamic head tracking features which means that when you turn your head from side to side like this, with supporting headphones like AirPods on, you'll be able to hear the audio move from ear to ear and position the sound relative to where your screen is. But that experience is slightly different to what we're covering today. So spatial audio is, is really a broader name for all of the audio formats that involve three-dimensional surround sound that comes from all around you and places you at the heart of it all. So that's things like your Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and Sony 360 Reality Audio, to name just a few. In the late 60s, we saw some of the earliest forms of surround sound being introduced to make movies more immersive. They expanded on the ideas of mono and stereo audio that came at you from one place by adding additional channels like overheads to create a more spatially accurate sound field. Now this was some pretty big news and it has been a catalyst for a lot of development within cinematic audio that can be seen today. This has been huge for the film and TV industry and it's becoming more and more popular in homes as well as the cinema. So where does music come into this then? Well, not to be left behind, we're now seeing a massive push for the same sort of surround sound technology to be used for music listening as well, to create a much more immersive and all-encompassing listening experience for us. Now, naturally, stereo for music has been around for a while now, and sure, it does a great job, but I think that the people at the top have been getting itchy feet and are looking to really change things up on this front. Audio engineers and producers from across the globe have all been pretty impressed with some of the innovations of object tracking audio formats like Dolby Atmos, and that's why we're seeing such a big push for 3D spatial audio within the music industry right now. The important thing to remember with spatial audio, though, is not all of these versions or formats are the same and they all have their own unique limitations and benefits. Now for me, I see it a little bit like football teams. You've got your Wrexham and your Manchester City, they all do the same thing but not necessarily to the same level. Sorry Ryan, not quite Premier League yet. Now the term spatial audio isn't as drastic but it's pretty similar. Dolby Atmos is leading the way in this department and has done for a while now and based on all of the listening that I've done, I think this is where you should be looking for the best spatial audio music experience. Now there are some great alternatives like DTSX and Sony 360 Reality Audio but there are also some less effective formats too. The key thing to remember though is spatial audio can work without Dolby Atmos but more often than not you'll probably be listening to them both at the same time. Just just remember to keep an eye out and don't be fooled just because something's labeled as spatial audio and assume it's the best of the best because that term actually covers a lot more than you might think. 
So you've got your spatial audio format, but what next? Well, it's then got to be mixed by the producer for that format, which can have a huge impact on the final listening result. Now, while I have no idea how to produce music or the ins and outs of the process, you will notice that a lot of reviewers are slating some mixes of spatial audio tracks whilst absolutely loving others. Well, that's because spatial audio for music can be a little bit of a minefield. So without getting too deep into things here, with films, your spatial audio experience is pretty much dictated by what you see on screen. So that plane that flies overhead is pretty obviously gonna be positioned above you. But music's not quite that simple. Because there's no visual cue like a TV screen, a lot of the decisions about where sounds come from within the 3D sphere actually comes down to the unique ideas of the producers. There's so much more creative freedom and a lot more room for unique ideas to really decide how they want you to hear the music. Now that might seem really complex, but to simplify it, it basically just means that some producers might decide to make it feel like you're watching a band live on stage, whereas others might decide to place you right there in the middle of the stage as if you were actually playing yourself. So it's all gonna change how you hear spatial audio, and that's why there's so many different opinions out there on certain tracks. But personally, instead of focusing on the not so great mixes and thinking about the positives, when you get the right track mixed well, it takes your audio to another level. And this is what gets me very excited about the future of this format. For example, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon has recently been remastered to suit spatial audio for its 50th anniversary and it is fantastic. We would say songs by Dolby Atmos are the ones that you'll want to be looking out for, so keep an eye out for that Dolby Atmos logo in your streaming service now playing screen. Now we've done some testing with Amazon Music spatial audio playlists and on the whole, the tracks mixed with Dolby Atmos were consistently better than those mixed with Sony's 360 reality audio. Okay, but how do you actually get your hands on spatial audio music then? Well, first, you're going to need a supporting music platform, and at the time of filming, these are the platforms on screen now that currently support spatial audio, but things are changing day by day, and I can't see the list staying this small forever. So once you've got a compatible service, you're then gonna need some spatial audio compatible hardware, whether that's headphones, a soundbar, speakers, or anything like that. It's worth noting that the experience you gain from it is naturally going to come down to how effective your device or setup is though. So although something like an iPhone can deliver Dolby Atmos tracks via headphones, it's gonna be nothing like a Sonos Era 300, for example, that has been designed specifically for spatial audio. I think this is something for another video, but in terms of specifically designed spatial audio speakers, if I had to take a guess, I can see a huge influx coming to the market over the next few years. Now, another thing to bear in mind is Dolby Atmos tracks can't be sent to devices via Bluetooth or AirPlay, so streaming services that offer a direct connection to their servers will be required. Another question that we've been asked non-stop is, will we be seeing spatial audio coming to Spotify anytime soon? And I certainly hope so. I'm an avid Spotify user and admittedly, I was a little bit skeptical about listening to spatial audio content on Apple Music. And I was thinking to myself, is it actually worth the hype? But after demoing it with a stereo pair of Sonos Era 300s, I've definitely been tempted to make the switch. I've always been pretty satisfied without spatial audio, but I think it's one of those things that once you hear it, there is no looking back. It's a completely different experience in the best way and a seriously impressive step up in immersion. If I wasn't stuck within a Spotify family plan, then I'd probably already be all over Apple Music right now, but I genuinely can't see it being long until Spotify joins the party. Can I guarantee it? No, but with pressure from the Spotify community and other streaming platforms jumping on board, then surely it's only a matter of time. But look guys, spatial audio sounds great on the surface, but I'd be lying if I said it hasn't got me thinking about where it fits into the future. We've all seen it before with other technologies like 3D and 8K TV, where it all just feels either a little bit gimmicky or a bit too advanced for where we are currently. But I just can't see it with this one, and I think there's a pretty standout reason for that. Apple. They're never first, but they're nearly always right, and I think the fact that they're now pushing spatial audio on their music platform is huge. It's like that 8K TV example. If cable TV providers or Sky started providing multiple channels that supported 8K content, then no doubt it would be really pushing its way into the mainstream. Spatial audio has already broken that boundary. One of the mainstream music providers has hopped on the train and I think that's got to mean something moving forward. Now I know there's a lot of hype around spatial audio, but it isn't anything new. And if you've got a Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar and some rears, you've probably been listening to spatial audio in the loosest sense for years now. But Apple has really intensified the glare and made a star out of it, which normally only means one thing. It's where we're all headed, whether we like it or not. 
It feels like we're moving away from spatial being something that just audio enthusiasts enjoy and entering into that realm of what's popular and what's not. And for some reason, I think it's here to stay. But what do you guys think? Are you sold on spatial audio or do you think it's too early? Let me know down in the comments below.